Good evening. This right here is the World Economic Forum's annual meeting that's currently being held in the city of Davos, Switzerland. Now, initially, this meeting was set to be held back in January, but since that was when the Omicron variant of the virus was spreading throughout the world, well, it has been pushed back to May. And as per usual, the meeting is attended by the global elites who, among several other things, discuss ways to reshape society for the better, at least from their perspective, as well as how to set up more systems of control over our lives. Now, you might say I'm being hyperbolic when I say that. However, let's go through some of the actual highlights that have come out of Davos thus far, and you can make your own determination for yourself as to whether I'm speaking in hyperbole. And let's start at the very beginning with a segment from a speech that was delivered by Mr. Klaus Schwab, who, for your reference, is the founder of the World Economic Forum, and who, in no uncertain terms, states that he believes that the members in attendance of the meeting have both the means as well as the responsibility to reshape the world. Take a listen. The future is not just happening. The future is built by us, by a powerful community as you here in this room. We have the means to improve the states of the world. Now, that is a very lofty goal. And by the way, as a quick aside, I believe it's worth mentioning that back in the year 2019, there was a documentary featuring Klaus Schwab giving an interview inside of his home. And right there on his bookshelf, you can clearly see a bust of Vladimir Lenin, who also had very lofty ambitions to reshape society. What a strange coincidence. Regardless, you might be asking yourself, how can such a lofty goal actually be achieved? How can global societies, which comprise nearly 8 billion people around the world, actually be remade? And the answer lies in both tracking as well as controlling the lives of the average citizens. And one way to be able to achieve that goal is under the guise of environmental protection. Now again, that sounds a bit conspiratorial, but they're saying it out loud for themselves for the world to hear. As an example, here's a segment of the speech given by Mr. Michael Evans, who is the president of the Alibaba Group. And in his speech, he boasts about how his company is currently developing a personal carbon footprint tracker for individual citizens. Not for businesses, mind you, but for individual citizens like you and me. Take a listen. We're developing through technology an ability for consumers to measure their own carbon footprint. What does that mean? That's where are they traveling? How are they traveling? What are they eating? What are they consuming on the platform? So individual carbon footprint tracker. Mm. Stay tuned, we don't have it operational yet, but this is something that we're working on. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm going to take his advice and I'm most certainly going to be staying tuned for this new tool, which will allow Alibaba to track all of my movements, my dietary habits, my financial transactions, and so on. And speaking of financial transactions, during another panel over at Davos, you had the president of the French Central Bank, as well as the president of Credit Suisse, discussing how within the next five years or so, they will have up and running a central bank digital currency that can track and can even control what you and I purchase. Take a listen. Fast forward five years. Do we have a central bank digital coin out there in the world that is being utilized on a daily basis, whether it's wholesale or retail, and it becomes a superior system? Francois, yes or no? Uh, we have several experiments which are not very far from that. No. They are not yet generalized, but they could be let's say, in the next three years, probably. It will go quicker on the wholesale side, yes. I guess, because it raises less that? sensitive questions. Yes, mm. Axel. Mm. Oh, I'm quite I'm glad to hear what you're saying, uh, Francois, on, on the wholesale uh, digital, currency, uh, digital currency, not coin. Uh, I am also a believer that will come in five years, yes. What I try to say is obviously, you know, we still have those huge legacy environment, they need to migrate as well, so we will not yet see all the benefits coming through, but it will come and will be much more efficient, They're also probably much more secure, uh, lowering transaction costs. And again, just like they mentioned in that speech, well, you can imagine the convenience, you can imagine the security, but can you imagine the control? Because if you thought that having the Canadian government freeze the bank accounts of truckers was egregious, well, that's quite literally child's play compared to the power that a central bank would possess if the currency that's in circulation is a centralized digital currency. Because in that scenario, they can quite literally control who you do business with, what time of day you do business, what products you buy, and so on and so on. All these pieces fit together actually quite nicely because in that scenario, you can have this Alibaba tracking tool tracking your individual carbon footprint. And then if they find out that, let's say, in a given month, you're over the limit of your allotment of carbon credits, and then 
the central bank digital currency that's in your wallet, it can be turned off such that you're no longer allowed to spend any more money until your carbon credits have been replenished. Now, again, that might sound like hyperbole, but given the fact that this is what these individuals themselves are talking about, and given the fact that Klaus Schwab opened this whole meeting by stating quite simply that the members of the World Economic Forum have both the means as well as the responsibility to remold society, well, frankly, you can decide for yourself with whether this is actually their goal or not. Now, of course, you might naturally say, sure, these individuals might wish to control the citizens of the world, but we have human rights. We have the basic rights of free speech, free expression, free assembly, and so on. And that is true for now. Because you see, during another panel at the World Economic Forum, the director of the Australian government's e-safety commission, Ms. Julie Grant, well, she said that it's high time for us to recalibrate what exactly we mean by things like human rights and free speech. Take a listen. We are finding ourselves in a place um, where we're, we have increasing polarization <laughs> everywhere and everything feels binary when it doesn't need to be. So I think we're going to have to think about a recalibration of a whole range of human rights that are playing out online, you know, from freedom of speech to the freedom to, you know, to be free from on online violence or the uh, right of data protection to the right to child dignity. Now, oddly missing from the points that she listed was a person's right to peacefully protest against their government's mandates or the right of a person to refuse getting injected with a drug that they don't want. And on that point, the point of that drug, particularly the vaccine, well, there was another panel that was held at Davos wherein the CEO of Moderna, he complained about having to throw away 30 million doses of his COVID vaccine because apparently nobody wants them. Take a listen. As Seth knows, we are now throwing those into the garbage. It's, it's sad to say. I'm in the process of throwing 30 million doses into the garbage because nobody wants them. Uh, we have a big demand problem. We right now have uh, governments, we try to contact, not only is Seth, who is doing great work with his team trying to get demand into the countries, but also we contacted through the Washington, the embassies in Washington, every country, and nobody wants to take them. And so the challenge we have now is, it's a very different situation than we had two years ago. The problem we had two years ago is there was no mRNA capacity in the world, zero. The situation is very different today. Modern has $3 billion of annual capacity. Pfizer has $4 billion doses at $7 billion. And the Chinese don't want the vaccines of mRNA. So if you just take the, just the Chinese population out, you have more than a dose per person. And as we just discussed, the issue in many countries is people don't want vaccines. In the US, people don't want vaccines. Around the world, we have a lot of people who don't want the vaccine, as the Prime Minister and his team are working against. So we don't have a capacity issue around the planet. It is not true. And now let's, sorry. Do you hear the sound of a coin flipping? You're right. It's a gold coin from American Hartford Gold, my personal gold and silver bullion dealer. Listen, you already know that inflation right now is at a 40-year high, interest rates are skyrocketing, and unfortunately, it looks like we are heading straight for a recession. And so, stuck between this record inflation and a looming recession, well, our retirement accounts are in jeopardy. Now, I don't give you any financial advice, but I will tell you that I buy gold and silver, physical gold and silver from American Hartford Gold every single month. And I would recommend that you give them a call and see what they can do for you. Because not only can they deliver this gold and silver directly to your doorstep, but they can also deposit it directly into your IRA and your 401k accounts, making the entire process super simple and protecting you from whatever comes in the future. And best of all, best of all, Right now, they are running a promotional offer for our viewers, for the viewers of Facts Matter, where on your first order, they will give you up to $2,500 worth of free silver on your qualifying purchase. So calling them is an absolute no-brainer. Their phone number is 866-242-2352. That's 866-242-2352. Or you can text Roman to 655 they are one of the highest rated firms in the entire country. They have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau, and they have quite literally tens of thousands of satisfied clients across the entire country, including me, myself. So give them a call. They're a great sponsor for this episode. And now let's head on back to the studio. Now, there is a lot more coming out of this annual meeting every single day. And for your reference, this meeting will continue until Saturday the 28th, and we will continue to cover it until then. In fact, right now, my team and I are working on a longer-term project exposing some of the details surrounding the Great Reset and Agenda 21, both of which are some of the stated goals that the World Economic Forum is working on. You can expect that in the next few days. Until then, if you'd like to go deeper into any of the speeches that we discussed in today's episode, I'll throw the links down into the description box below this video for you to check out. And all I ask in return is that you take a super quick moment to smash, smash, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm, and also smash that subscribe button if you haven't already, in order to get this type of honest news content delivered directly into your YouTube feed every single weekday. And now lastly, at the same time that we're seeing these global elites come together and plan out our future, 
We're also simultaneously seeing populist movements rising up in countries around the entire world, including, of course, here in the U.S. And so amidst this backdrop, I got a chance to speak with Ms. Cheryl Chumley, who is the author of the book, Locked Down, The Socialist Plan to Take Away Your Freedom. Here's a trailer for that awesome interview. Right now, countries around the world, including the United States, are at somewhat of a crossroads. Because on the one hand, you have organizations like the World Economic Forum and the World Health Organization, which are currently both having meetings in Switzerland, and they are pushing the elites across the entire globe to consolidate power and to express more authority from the top down. However, simultaneously, we are seeing populist movements rising up in countries everywhere, such as in the US, Canada, France, Australia, Hungary, and so on, with people working in their countries to reclaim their own national sovereignty apart from these international organizations. And so, amidst this backdrop, we got a chance to speak with Ms. Cheryl Chumley, an opinion editor over at The Washington Times, as well as the author of the book Lockdown, The Socialist Plan to Take Away Your Freedom. If you'd like to check out that interview in its entirety, well, we just published it over on Epic TV, which is our awesome no censorship video platform. The link will be right there at the very top of the description box. I hope you click on it, and I hope that you check it out. And then until next time, I'm your host, Roman from the Epic Times. Stay informed and stay free.